Hello and welcome, good afternoon, good evening, good morning, middle of the night, whenever you might be watching this video. Uh, my name is Mark Perron with Conscious Living Network. Welcome to Conscious Conversations. And today my guest is the beautiful Deidre Siriani. Uh, I met Deidre at a, a co-hacking co co <laughs> Vancouver uh, event. It's a new group about hacking consciousness. She was one of the speakers there and we really connected, uh, got to know much more about her and her work. So I invited her to join us on a great conversation. I know she's got a couple of great events coming up in terms of creating transformation for conscious entrepreneurs. And, you know, hey, Conscious Living Network, we, we love consciousness. We love helping people, entrepreneurs, whatever it is, to really get what they want in their life and, you know, have experiential opportunities as well so that they can create the change. And Deidre does exactly that. So thank you, Deidre. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks yeah, for having me. This is great yeah, to be here. My pleasure. I love your smile, by the way. It always just so up. That's it, it's always nice to you know get that beam of light or a bit of sunshine every day, even though it's a nice day out here. So, <laughs> thank, so thank you very much. So let, let's get started. Maybe you can tell you know our community who you are, what kind of led you into the work that you do, and really what the work is that you do. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks for having me. This is so great to be here. So. The work that I do is I help mainly impact-driven entrepreneurs, people who have a message to share, people who want to make a difference in the world, people who uh, consider themselves as leaders or visionaries. I help them collapse obstacles that are preventing them from being in states of flow all of the time. And really having that overview sense of seeing things exactly as they are rather than getting caught up in the muck, the things that pull us out of alignment and away from ourselves and create a lot of chaos in our life. So, Dissolving trauma, dissolving triggers, creating new states of alignment and flow so that when we are in a space of flow, we're able to see the next best step and then we don't get caught up in the things that aren't aligned with our mission, with our vision, with who we truly are and our vibration and, mm -hmm. and what we're here to do. So essentially that's what I do. A lot of the work is about helping these entrepreneurs, these impact driven entrepreneurs raise consciousness, collapse obstacles, and do that at an accelerated rate so that they can live in freedom, flow, self-expression, and, and do their work in a, in a more impactful way. Beautiful. But, you know, I didn't always do that. I didn't always, I wasn't always in this work. It was a journey of going through a lot of different things along the way on my path of not being in alignment with my true self of being stuck in the muck and identifying myself as that. And when we were at that talk uh, about a month ago, I shared my story of my wake up call mm -hmm. and how oftentimes symptoms in our body are manifestations of our soul communicating something to us. And so, Absolutely. yeah, so, so, five <laughs> years, <laughs> so five years ago, when I had my wake up call, I ran a business from the outside looking in. Everyone thought I had the perfect life. I was married, I had a dog, bought a house, did all the things, you now know. Now she has a cat. <laughs> now, now I just have a cat, no dog. <laughs> but um, I, I was really good at checking things off the list and, and people thought I was the happiest person they knew. And this was the trap because I was so busy maintaining my life that I was trapped in a cycle and I, was successful, I was this, I was this, but on the inside, on a deep level, I felt like there was something that was missing and there was a voice inside of me that was saying, you're plain small or where you are isn't quite it. Well, hey, if there's one thing I know and I can speak from experience, I've met a lot of people, talked to a lot of people, Deidre, you are the only one who has ever had that experience in the world. <laughs> And I lie about other things too. <laughs> he's no, a, but I'm just, I'm kidding, he's right? a really because, good liar. <laughs> no, it's, it's because how many people can relate to that? Mm -hmm. And that's such a, a powerful statement and, and story just by itself because I've been there, I've done that. Mm -hmm. And when you talk to so many people on this journey and this path, this is part of that wake up call. Yes, of, of maintain, of mm -hmm. doing the same things because maybe from the outside looking in, you are getting that external validation. And what has potentially made you successful is the very trap that you've created for yourself. And that's, that's what happened with me. If you were to meet me five years ago, I would always be smiling, but it wasn't real. It was more of a, a role that I was playing based on conditioning, based on patterns. And so when I hit my rock bottom moment, I had a lot of manifestations of dis-ease in my body. 
psoriasis, um, massive anxiety. And I was in front of, you know, 50 to 100 people a day. So no one knew that I had social anxiety. Everyone's like, oh, she's super outgoing. She's this, she's that. And again, we hear that often. So many people, they're, they're out there in the world and they're making change and doing great stuff. And inside, they're freaked out. Yeah. And, and this, is, this is the illusion, the trap that we can get in when we reach a certain level of success or when we reach a certain level of something in our life that's really consistent that has become easy for us it's the trap of success it's the trap that we created for ourselves and so I created this life that didn't feel like my own and I started to have all these little manifestations and I wasn't listening to the voice inside of me every time it would come up I would say shh I'd push it down I'd swallow the truth because I didn't want to deal with it until the symptoms became louder I I face depression to the point of having a vision of killing myself. And that wasn't even my wake up call. My wake up call was, and I believe the universe, whatever you want to call it, the universe uh, gives you exactly what you need to make the change that you need to in your life. And hopefully you're not as stubborn as me. But for me, I need, I, sometimes I just need like, boom, listen, girl. What is it with strong women being so stubborn? I don't know. Yeah. I don't if you know. Did know. If no, that's, I, that's just a bonus nugget. I'm just curious. If I did know. I know a lot of strong women who may be stubborn. You know, I, yes. I love it because they're standing up for what they believe in or what they feel is right. Mm, it's, the, it's the same thing that's helped them get to a certain level of safety, mm-hmm. of success. Um, which has helped them get to a certain point in their life. But when we reach new levels of success, of happiness, of alignment, of flow, we've we've been told, this has been said, that what led you to where you are now is not going to get you to your next level. So it's the same. Like I was super stubborn, super in my own way, that I finally had to listen. And it's, oh, even talking about it. But my way I've never done that either. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> right. You're like you're like I'm not stubborn no, at all. I, no, I get I I totally relate to what you're saying, mm. uh, especially in where I'm in my life right now. And I only say that to, to because I really resonate with you just saying that you know you'll get really far with a lot of stuff that you do. But it's you know my realization a couple of weeks ago is to stay on my path, which is growth and development, to stop learning for myself and all those from other people. Yeah. So I have to take another deeper dive so that I can learn the things that I didn't even know that I didn't know that I knew that I didn't know. And now I'm going to do a growth journey. Now you're going to learn what you don't know so that exactly. hopefully you know and then you realize you don't know. a whole other level of what I don't know I don't know. You know, but it's a, that plateau. <laughs> but you know. Right? It's true. <laughs> do they I know? know that I know that I don't know. He don't know. I don't even know what I don't know. He don't know, know when he <laughs> don't know what he knows. But this is what happens and what Peter's saying. You know, we, we climb to that plateau and then we'll plateau for a while. Mm. And then we got to take the next step. Yeah. Right? And that is where the strength comes in. That's our personal power. 100%. Constant. And so the wake-up call, I lost a massive chunk of hair. It was on the top of my head, bald spot, and I was told that I was going to lose all of my hair. And that was when I was like, no, I need to listen. I need to change this. And that's when I started to turn my life around. And really, even though I was working with the shaman and actually studying what the soul was saying, I wasn't listening. So that's another level of, of learning. We can read all of the books. You can read all the books on manifestation, on psychedelics, on personal development, on relationships. But if you are not embodying it, you haven't learned it. And so there's so many people, and I was one of them, especially in that department, which I'm telling you about, where it's like I knew all about it, but I wasn't living it. So one of the things I help people do now is embody the change so you don't have to think about it. But that's what led me on the path that I'm on now. And one of the things that you mentioned, Mark, which I find is super valuable, you said that you don't know what you don't know. And then you also said something along the lines of um, being stuck or, or not developing yourself anymore. Mm-hmm. And that's super interesting because the trap that we can get in is thinking that we have it all figured out. Yeah, and I, I, I relate. I've been there. And I've done a lot of work in, you know, in the world I live in. I'm mm-hmm. always doing stuff. So... You know, a big part of me is to, you know, to actually own that and be mm. authentic within myself and say, hang on a second, I need to go learn from my 
much stuff. And I love it. I, I love yes. the workshop. I, I'm a sucker for, you know, I tell myself seminars actually because I love to go learn and experience different things and the different tools that you learn from different people. Mm-hmm. Is there any time you can put more tools in your toolbox? Because you say those to get the job done. Yeah, and I find the best leaders, the people that I look up to the most, and, and there aren't a lot of leaders that I actually am like, yes, I back you. Because most people, and I'm not saying all of them, they're not living what they're teaching, and that to me is not authentic, and I don't necessarily want to learn from them. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. But the thing is, just because you're a master at one thing doesn't mean you're a master at everything, and this is something I've had to really remind myself. That the teachers and the people that I learn from are the ones who are like, I figure this out, but I'm still figuring it out. It's a journey, yeah. it's a process, it's never, an everyday ne- the, thing. The work never ends. It's like it brushing never. your teeth. You do it every day, hopefully twice a day, right? You continue to do it. And when you stop doing it or you think you have it all figured out or you don't put yourself out there for support when things aren't working, that's, I think, a weakness. Mm-hmm. Whereas a lot of us sometimes, we may think that going and getting support is the weakness. It's actually the opposite. No, and, and many of us, and I can relate to it myself, and I know many people like me, you know, we're out there to serve and, and help so many people mm-hmm. that we forget to ask for help. And yeah. sometimes it's not even about forgetting, but we don't ask for help because, you know, there's, there's this, you know, you're a better giver than you're a receiver. Mm-hmm. And some people are a better taker than they are a giver. Right. You know? So mm-hmm. it's, it, it's certainly, you know, a different personality trait for different people, but it's like we've got to learn how to Mm -hmm. one of the things that we mentioned earlier was maintaining Mm. right this is something I hear so many people who come to me say it's like I feel like I'm just maintaining I'm maintaining the social aspect of my life I'm maintaining my relationship I'm maintaining my image that is a symptom of being out of alignment and playing small too and it's a trap so if you feel like you're maintaining it's time to work on your evolution of diving deeper because when we maintain we become stagnant and it's one of our human needs is to evolve grow is to grow and i'm obsessed with it and, and if something that's growing it's it's dying exactly it's right nature. that's nature at work folks yeah it's maintaining mm-hmm. so that's not fun well, well you're just in a vegetative state which you're maintaining but you're never yeah. going to blossom and bloom yeah, and sometimes when we're maintaining, it's because we've said yes to things that are no longer aligned. Mm-hmm. And you know, another thing well, that this it, becomes conditioning. You mentioned mm-hmm. conditioning earlier. You know, we get so conditioned in our own, you know, world for our job, our culture, our society, our relationship, and that's where we start running that hamster wheel in the nine to five or whatever. It is. And mm-hmm. we're not even doing mm-hmm. it consciously. We're on an unconscious program. Mm-hmm. Does it make sense? Yes. You know, and. When, I, I think when you're living a life of joy, bliss, freedom, learning, growth, and doing different things, life gives has a whole new meaning. It's brighter. It's, mm-hmm. it's just got more love and compassion and freedom. Yes, and it doesn't mean that it's always that way. Oh, no, gosh, no. no. <laughs> but, but that's life. That's life. My goal is to keep the highs higher, the lows lower, and my <laughs> level. There we go. Because yeah, this is life. Yeah. But if you can have more these that are longer mm-hmm. and these are shorter and shallower mm-hmm. and, and these don't have to be short or deep and painful at all really in my opinion yeah I'm sure you talk about that too. well I'm the first to say that the more aligned you become mm-hmm. and this is what I've realized because in the last year I've I've moved through a lot of energies right I'm, I'm in this work all the time even though I'm teaching it and supporting people I commit you know 10 to 15 hours a week of studying of diving deep of working with my mentors of opening up right which isn't for everyone some people are like I don't want to do that all the time but I'm the first one to say that you know I've been in the tornado and the more we up level the more we come into alignment the more excruciating it is to be out of alignment even one percent so as you begin to dial up you'll start to notice the subtleties and sometimes it's like we're in a tornado and our internal shit is out there and there's the external And we're just in it and observing. And that's a really interesting place to be because it's the self-sorting. So if you're in a place of chaos, if you're in a place of massive expansion or contraction, it's all a part of the process. And I think the best thing to do is just surrender, let it be, and allow things to settle so that you can step into a higher frequency of who you are and and who you are here to be. And a big part of that is showing up 
to the work when you don't want to. Most of the time, I don't want to show up to the work. The work that I haven't wanted to do, and that's the sign that I need to show up to the work. Yeah. Right? I, I get it. Wherever there's, in, in many cases, wherever that biggest resistance is where the biggest gift is. So if you're out there and you have a vision of being a speaker or leading workshops and you're not doing it, you know, there's that level of fear. And, and I've seen it. It's one of the things we do in Consecrated Network is to help people, you know, get in front of more people and, and bring their mission to the world. Mm. But it's really interesting to see that, you know, it's very often what we want the most and we're afraid of doing it. Wow. And, I, and I've been there, you know, doing some of my own stuff. It's like you really want to do it, you create it, you get it going, and then you start freaking out. Well, can and I share a personal story on this? Well, what do you think, guys? Should we let her? I think so. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> Abs- absolutely <laughs> not. So I'm just going to be really raw and real with something that's been coming up in my life because I, this is stuff that people don't talk about enough, and I believe in authenticity and what I mean by that is transparency. So when I work with people, I am transparent if they want me to be with whatever's happening because from the outside looking in, if you are already a leader or you're in a space where people see you in a certain light, um, I think it's really important to share with your inner circle and your people a little bit of what's going on in your life so that because that is the deep connection and that's the, um, the connection to yourself and knowing that other people are in that journey. It makes you more relatable. Yeah. People actually recognize this person is human. Sure, they're a driven business person or a busy yes. entrepreneur. They've got no heart because they're just a capitalist. They want to just yeah. go, go, go. And for the people who are doing that, and I know mm-hmm. I've been there too, it's mm-hmm. been part of my journey, that when you you know, you know talk about that authenticity and sharing things in your life and, and being real, mm-hmm. people will relate to you in a much different way. Yes. You know, not just in the business world, but also in your and I want to talk to you guys like you're in my inner circle right now. So I'm just going to share authentically what's going on. So this event has been something I've been thinking about for years. And it's happening, which is so exciting. Yes. So much energy behind it. And I hope that you can and I come. Love, I love the name of it. It's called Turn Your Light On. It's all about waking up to who you are and who you're meant to be in the world. And it's going to be really powerful. So this year, I had a couple goals, which I don't even like that word anymore. Yeah, thanks. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm it's like such a such a buzzword. It's it's a buzzword, and it's like the obligation of having goals. You know what? I it's more it's less about what you're doing. It's more about who you're being, and through the beingness, you will manifest and create what it is that you're here to do. And showing up, right? Showing up to those calls, those nudges, the things that are stagnant or pulling you away from yourself. So there's this event, and another one of my goals this year was to get a TED talk, and I got one. I got a TEDx, and what's been happening with me? is I've been writing this TEDx talk, and it's super exciting, but to be honest, it's excruciating. And the it's a lot re- of work. <laughs> what you gotta do to prepare for a TED talk is a lot of work. Yeah, and I'm putting all of my patterns, all of my shit, all of my self-learning from the inside out on a piece of paper, and I'm gonna be on stage, and hopefully it goes viral, right? Like that's always the goal behind these things, the goal, because um, you wanna impact more people. And I'm reading it, and there's so much stuff that's coming up that I have to do self-processing around because it's like, it's not just sharing with my inner circle. It's not just being on a stage and sharing. It's like, this is another level of complete transparency. So I'm sharing that because when I first started doing it, I had the thought, do I even really want this? Is this really what I want to do? And I was, I had to, I had a little bit of a battle with myself and not enough leaders and people who are in the transformational space or whatever space you want to call it human evolution i don't really like buzz i don't really like words because they're limiting and, and I, <laughs> I, I love words because they're limitless there we go limiting and limitless we we should work on that duality there well i know well, that, that's a whole new, new new program and because even if we talk about goals and we talk about buzzwords and right. i want to say something because goals are important Mm-hmm. It's the meaning that you have to that word. So, so many people have, you know, it becomes a buzzword, buzzword, everybody needs a goal. And then we create a condition, mm-hmm. uh, connection in our psychology and our consciousness and our body that we don't like that word because it brings up because most of us don't ever achieve our goals. So, we, uh, it just got this bad feeling. It's like a goal. trigger almost. Yeah. But there was a study done back in, I think it was the late 50s, somewhere down at Harvard. And they took a look at the graduating class and they looked at, um, how many had goals and where their life was and what they were doing, how they were living their life. 
and they followed these people for a couple of decades, and I think it was up to 20, 30 years. The people who had written goals in the beginning of the study and always kept their goals and worked on that as part of their life and their, their, their plan achieved 98% more, the 2% of them, it was 2% versus 98% that actually did it consistently. Mm -hmm. And they created more than 98% more combined income, you know, like they, they just blew it away than that 98% that didn't. Wow. So those 2% of those, those, that study created more right. like exponentially than 98% who almost made well, the beautiful thing about having goals or things that we're working towards is that it keeps us in our evolution. It keeps yeah, us pushing ourselves. Absolutely. Otherwise, we're stagnant. Yep. And as we reach these goals, the fear of success, the fear of vulnerability, the fear of the next level comes up. And I shared that story with you because a lot of leaders, um, they'll make sure everything's super polished. A year, two or three or five years later, I just shared something from five years ago, right? Um, and then we can present it and be like, oh, you're so vulnerable. It's like, yeah, but I'm over it. It was five years ago. Well, what's going on in my life right now? That was just a few months ago. So I think it's important for us to like open ourselves up. At least this is what I believe in for myself to connect. And, and you know, as we reach those next levels of expansion of reaching towards our service for the world of our impact, Absolutely. it's going to happen. We may want to hold back. And I see a lot of people doing that. And a lot of it is from unconscious triggers that are in the way of pulling you away from what you want rather than moving you towards it. And that's a lot of the work that I do. Yeah, so I do self-processing. You, 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 know, you collapse tr triggers, you or the anchors, and, and do all that yeah. great stuff because it's, and, and these are important things I believe everybody mm -hmm. needs to know is how that conditioning in our body works um, mm -hmm. and, and our mind and our psychology because that's what's truly going to set you free. Mm -hmm. And I think the most important thing you you've been saying that really resonates with me where I'm at in my life today is about authenticity. It's about transparency. Mm -hmm. it, it's about being true to who you are. So have your goals, but have your goals for you, not yeah. for your dad or your church or your school or whatever it is, right? And it's that authenticity. And that's the most beautiful thing I, I'm, I'm really picking up right now mm -hmm. because it doesn't matter what you do, be you. Yes, and, right. and, and the things that pull us away from ourselves really are our traumas. Mm -hmm. And this is a big part of the work that I do with my one-on-one -on -one clients is dissolving core traumas. Because with a trauma, there's an image, there's a thought, there's a body sensation, and there's an emotion. And we're not able to fully process it when we have the trauma, the imprint. And so what happens is because our body hasn't processed it, we store it, and then every time we see, feel, hear, or have an emotion that's similar to the core traumas that we've had. And we've all had trauma, so I think that's important to know. We've all experienced it. We take moves away from ourselves. We say yes when we would rather say nor, nor, uh, no, nor. <laughs> but I'm like, am I trying to speak a different language that I don't know yet? Nor, or no. And, and it pulls us further and further away from ourselves. So there's a lot of people who are in power um, when I say power influence, that are like, I feel like I'm living a lie. I feel like this isn't it because they've stepped away from themselves because they haven't been able to collapse their core traumas, which is a big part of the work that I do. Because once those are gone, you're just like, of course I'm going to do this. Of course I'm going to put myself out there. Of course this is who I am. And those breakthroughs are so, you want to lose weight fast, have a breakthrough. Yes. Right. <laughs> yes. Right? Whatever it is for you. Absolutely. You know, and so those those are the things that keep us trapped is our patterning and traumas. So once they collapse, they have no power. But I don't think that trauma is talked about enough. Um, a lot of people do talk about trauma. It needs to be talked about more because everyone well, experiences it. I, I, I hear you. I, I have no, I, I have compassion for everybody what they go through. And right. I get it. And, and trauma is, you know, it's another buzzword nowadays. And what I love, we're here at Deidre's home, beautiful space here in, in the Jericho Beach area. And the sign behind us is, you only live now. If you're only living now, like right now, there's no trauma, even if we had trauma, because you're in the moment. And the more we can live in that moment, the past doesn't exist. The future doesn't exist. So if you're thinking about the future, thinking of all those things, again, you're not being present. Right here, I'm being completely present, authentic, and I, I'm just, I'm excited, and I'm learning, and I'm having fun. Mm -hmm. you know, I'm being myself. Right. So it's a very big thing because I'm so in the now. 
Mm-hmm. And if every moment of every day we always live our life in the now, because as soon as you start worrying, you're thinking about the future, right? And as soon as you're e- even trawling things, you're actually thinking about the past and you're reliving it. Something that happened 20, 30, 40 years ago, you're reliving that every day, every time you tell the story. Well, the interesting thing about trauma is that I'd love to infuse mm-hmm. here is that oftentimes we don't even know that the trauma is impacting us. Mm-hmm. So we can well, be as- so unconscious, right? And exactly. That's, that's the whole thing. It's just uh, what I'm getting at is when you keep telling the story. The story is another neuro yeah. where we're creating that that memory loop over and over and over yeah. again. And, and that just, actually and re-traumatizes every, us. Every time because you relive it as if you've been there. Right. Exactly. Right. So and that's um, what I love about the work you do. It's like, let's just get rid of it. And it's gone. And in, in like yeah. 15 to 30 minutes, I can really... Yeah, it's sometimes less. Oh, you're going to give Tony Robbins a run for his money. Well, actually, um, some of the work that uh, I do and some of the people that I work with do in this space, uh, Tony Robbins apparently has used it with some of his team members. Yeah. I, so so okay, and Tony, it's effective. So one thing I know, I, do, I spend a lot of time in that world. Tony's always learning. He, of course. He's looking for what works. Yeah, and he started team, with NLP, his, right? And his reputation has always been results. Where nobody else could get results. He mm-hmm. always got results, and part of that was just by learning every technique out there he could ever find and mm-hmm. using part of the way, because he was committed to helping people, and that's what I love about it. And I yes. Hear about it you too. Yes, and that's the thing. What I really love it and admire about him is the constant learning, and we know mm-hmm. him as Tony Robbins. We're like, oh, he's like this transmitter of of transformation, but it's it is him. But it's all the things that he's accumulated over time. It's not just one method. It's his presence. It's his desire to support people, him moving through things. It's Mm -hmm. all of the things combined. So when people are like, well, tell me exactly what you do. I'm like, you experience it. It's like going on a journey, an ayahuasca journey or some Mm plant-based medicine journey. You can talk about it for days and there may be some similarities for some people, but it's a journey and it's an experience and, and words are oftentimes limiting until you actually experience and it opens up a different world for you, a different experience. And, and a great example I always like to use for exactly what you're describing is, you know, if we had to explain to you, if we had a rose here, it'd be great because it would be perfect. But if we had to explain to you <coughs> what a rose smells like and you've never smelled a rose before, how do you do that? How would you describe yes. that? You know, you yeah. can talk about floral scents and light and velvety or whatever it might be, but you'll never get that essence without the experience mm-hmm. of smelling the rose. A hundred percent. So then let's talk more about your work, what you're going to do at this bookshop. Now, you've got a preliminary kind of introduction to your Turn Your Light On coming, I believe, September 17th. 17th, yeah. Right, we're going to do that. Um, the links will all be around. You'll see it attached to this video somehow, somewhere in there. If you want to come and uh, meet Deidre, learn more about her work, and, and get a taste for what she does. Um, and then it, it's your full-on Turn Your Light On event. Uh, which is a three-day event. By it's a two-day event. Two-day event, yeah. October 5th and 6th. And uh, if you're interested in that, you know, the, the, the September 17th is a, a, good, a good case to, to come and see mm-hmm. that. But you use the word, and, and I think it's unique, I've never heard it before, um, you use the term impact entrepreneur. Yes. So what is an impact entrepreneur specifically mm-hmm. in terms of your, you know, your model? <laughs> Yeah, so a a lot of entrepreneurs want to make a lot of money, and there is nothing wrong with bringing in abundance. I am not against that at all. What who I do work with and who I do support? Well, I'll go back a little bit. I ask myself, how can I make the biggest difference in the world with the work that I'm here to do? And I'm like, well, I want to work with people who want to make a positive impact, who are here to create a change in the world, that are heart centered, and that's their main priority. So money is amazing, and I think that it's important for everyone to have abundance because without abundance, we get in our survival mode and we don't think clearly, we're not ourselves, and we're not really able to be of full service to the world. Um, But it's really for people who feel called to share a message, to help move humanity forward, to help with the evolution of the planet, who have a specific mission, and they know that they're here to do that specifically. Like I know exactly what I'm here to do. So impact urban entrepreneurs are people who know that they're here to make an impact. This event though is for people who are impact urban entrepreneurs, for leaders. So maybe you're not an impact urban leader yet, but you know that where you are right now isn't where you're supposed to be and there's something bigger, a higher purpose that you're supposed to step into, but you don't know how to maybe shift from where you are now 
to where you want to be. And then there's the visionaries, the ones who have the vision of the future and maybe don't know how to put it into action. And that's a common challenge for so many people, right? There's entrepreneurial world, but they just, um, one of the biggest challenges for many people is it becomes overwhelm because we're so entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, and, you know, a friend of the show, I love the way he defined it, we're all in separate silos every day. And we need to get rid of those silos and not be solopreneurs. We need to work together. We need to network. We need to be open. We need to create an impact. Mm -hmm. so this is a huge board out there. Yeah, and bringing people together for these two days is about creating really powerful relationships. You're going to walk out of there with amazing, deep relationships that are going to help you with what you're doing in the world. And you're going to meet a bunch of people who are on the same path as you, which I think is everything. I know when I was going through my journey at the beginning, I didn't know a lot of people that were in the space that I wanted to be in. And it made it really challenging when people didn't under, fully understand who I was at my core or why I wanted to do what I was here to do. So the support system is essential. It's everything. Well, and you become who you hang around with. Mm -hmm. You know, like there's that famous quote out there, I, I never really said it but it, you know you become the five people you hang around with yeah and sharing with people you, the five people you hang around with now is going to show you your future yes right yeah you know so are you hanging out with people who are um inspiring you to step up your game to mm -hmm. be your ultimate badass self mm -hmm. you know are you hanging out with people who accept your excuses oh that's actually the worst i i put a quote up not too long ago and it was like Real friends don't let their friends play small. Exactly. I and love it so when my true. friends call me out yeah. and I call my friends out. <laughs> and there was a point in time when it's like, I, I, you know, and this is another one of my, you know, things over the past little while is, yeah, I don't want to be called out. Right? I didn't like it. It was like, you know, there was a point it's like, yeah, call me out. Oh, awesome. And I'll, yeah. I'll step up. And then all of a sudden it's like, I get called out. And I'm like, yeah, you're right. You're right. And then, <laughs> you know, the, the voice in my head knew they were right. Right. Yet. My ego, right? you know, because that's really what it was, was really getting in the way because I also didn't want to admit that I was falling short. Right. And I sit here in front of you that, you know, I've fallen short and I'll still fall short, but I'm committed to stepping up and, and you know, continue to learn and grow mm -hmm. and serve. It's just one of those things that I think is important, not just for me, but for everybody. Because I can't speak for what anybody else wants to do. No. But that's basically what you're saying. Yeah, but your your inner circle. It's good to I be know. like, and, and hey, Mark, Deidre, that's not fully you. Like, no. that's not really interesting. And Deidre, I am publicly, for the rest of time, giving you permission. <laughs> Deal. Yeah. Deal. Deal. <laughs> See? The people I hang around with. And then he's yeah. and then he's going to ghost. He's going to ghost and not show up to the event. He's going to be like, she's too intense. Well, sometimes it's timing in events, you know, because of we course. do events and everything else, mm -hmm. it's hard for me to attend everything, you know, yeah. so I'd never do everything, or, you know, I'd never get any work done, right, because I'm, I told you, I'm a seminar champion, I love this. Totally. Stuff. That's why I do it. Um, so then, what kind of stuff can these uh, impact on entrepreneurs expect as they come to your event? Now, you've got some guest speakers. Yeah. Right? Maybe you want to tell us who those people are and what Ooh. they're going to be sharing. Well, I'd love to tell you a little bit more about the event and what you're going to get, and then I'll and then I'll bring up the guest speakers. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Well, I was just kind of jumping the gun because I'm yeah. excited. Yeah, he's so excited. <laughs> <laughs> so the event is about waking up to who you truly are and your true potential. It's not your average seminar. I'm going to just put that out there because... Know, there's there's got to be another name for these kind of seminars because seminars kind of get... Yeah, it's, yeah, it's not a, a seminar like right. machine where it's like, I don't know. It's um, so what it is, I'll talk less about what it's not and more about what it is. <laughs> exactly. But it's one of those experiences where you show up, you look around the room, and you know that you are exactly where you need to be. Where you get goosebumps after you purchase the ticket, you have a call, you have a pull. And you're like, there's something here for me. And at that first day of the event, you walk in and it's like deja vu because you're like, your soul invited you here for a specific message, for a specific uh, purpose that you are here to step into. And as the time goes on throughout the first day, it all becomes clear. You look around and you start to experience your soul family, people that you feel like you've met before and are here to help guide you to that next level. 
And so that's the container. It's a, I want to say a family container in the sense of you're going to feel like you've been here before and like you're supposed to be there because your soul is pulling you. So right away, if you're still watching, we're like 35 minutes or something into this, you know, there's a reason why. So the, at this event, we're going to be dissolving and collapsing any physical, mental, or emotional barriers that are preventing you from living in your highest self, in your true calling, in your highest purpose. And if you don't fully know exactly what your highest purpose is, you will know that by the end of day one. You will collapse anything that is keeping you small. I say small as in my internal voice that I was playing small. So if you had that feeling, that's for you. <laughs> or holding you back and keeping you stuck in the day-to-day -day task of maintaining when you know Deep down, there's something right there for you, but because you're so caught up, you haven't taken that leap. Day one, out of the way it's gone. You're gonna be able to step forward and move into that. Day two is about living and leading from the heart, really understanding the core essence of who you are and how to take what you're here to do and take it and make the biggest impact in the world. And it's a deep experience. I'm not going to be on stage, you know, with the board, writing down this, 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 write it down and, you know, um, telling you how to think. I am not the master. I am the transmitter. I am the transmitter of your evolution, of your freedom, of your expansion, of your highest self going there and, and living it and the embodiment. So this is not, it's not about the mind. We're not playing there. And a lot of people have been like, oh, tell me exactly what we're doing hour for hour. I'm like, I'm sorry. When we tap into this kind of energy, this collective energy of massive transformation of what the world is calling us to step into, it cannot be in the mind. It has to be from the soul and the heart. So that's what this event is. It's a transmission of your highest self of the collapsing of obstacles that have been in the way that are no longer serving you and that are here, this event is here to push you onto your path so that you can make it easy and make the biggest impact. So it's gonna, you're gonna be diving deep, it's interactive, you're gonna be learning more about the people around you, there's gonna be some conversation between myself and the other speakers who are on stage and you and it's gonna be interactive, it's gonna be fun it's going to be deep. It's going to be transformational. It's going to change your life. And this is the first event. This is the very first one. We're going to be doing one maybe in the spring in Toronto. And this is the very beginning of the Turn Your Light On series. And um, one of the one of the uh, speakers is Carrie McGregor. She's uh, a friend of mine in the city. She's had over a million people watch her TED Talk. And she is really powerful with influence. She's actually writing a book right now on influence, how to use your message, your voice to be influential so that you can take it and use it to make the biggest impact. We also have another amazing uh, guest speaker, Brad Samuels, who is the expression of the heart. And so I'm the main facilitator, I'm the main transmitter, but I have these two in there to add that extra spice so that what we are doing, it all comes together. So at the end of the event, you know exactly what you need to do and, and, and the work happens at the event. It's not like, okay, now go do 20 things. It's like, no, the transmission has happened, the change has happened, the embodiment has happened. Now you go do your thing. You continue to be who you are in the world. So you actually do some time. work in the weekend. Uh, it's in a lot of internal work. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes, I like to do. I like to do sound effects. So there will be sound effects, and it there will be a dull moment. Like there needs to be fun in it. If something's not a little bit fun, like I'm not interested. But there's a lot of depth. And there's a lot of expansion. And, uh, and we learn best when we're enjoying ourselves, yes. having fun, and when we don't know what we're doing. Yes, and when we don't have it all figured out. This well, is for people well, who if, feel if, called. If you think you have it all figured out, then any workshop, anything you do, 
do, yes. you close your mind to the, the bigger possibility of what you'll learn because you think you, there's nothing to learn here. We yes. need to be able to get out of our head, out of our ego, whatever that is um, within us so that it opens up the, the door of possibility. Mm. Right? Yes. Because other times you're just closed minded and then I'm not saying that you're not smart, I'm not saying that you don't know a whole bunch of ton of stuff on whatever your expertise and your mastery is. But if we remain rigid and we're talking about a stubborn behavior. Right. You know, you need to open up and, and, and allow the, the, the process and the flow to <coughs> Exactly. Great. Awesome. And this is up at Vancouver City Terminal Club on October fifth and sixth. Yes, turn your light on. Ooh, I wanna make an announcement. Oh. Okay, I'm going to announce away. So this event is happening on October 5th and 6th, and uh, we're going to post the event link below so you can sign yourself up already, especially if you're still watching and you feel that call. There's a specific reason why you're here. And uh, the early bird rate ends on September 1st. So do yourself a favor if you feel the pull and register before that so you save yourself $200. Yeah, yeah, and invite your friends, get in it, and then we're also going to be doing a little event before that, yes, to, that's more on, on, I'm going to be giving some information and doing a mini experience on how to dissolve what is in the way of you connecting with your higher purpose. Yeah, I'm very excited about that. that. Yes. Um, anytime we can dissolve or disappear anything. <laughs> You're like, I'm just going to ghost now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, I gotta learn that that skill. Yeah. Ghost. <laughs> totally. That's funny. That, that's the second time I've heard that term. Really? Okay. Yeah, yeah. There we go. Yeah. yeah. So it's like hmm, maybe I've been ghosted. Maybe I've been something. I'm gonna grab something for a second too. Okay. So I've never. <laughs> we're in my home right now. I've never had anything that has a skull in it, in my wardrobe, in my home. I've just never wanted a skull in my home. I just I don't know. It's just never been something that's that I've awesome that I've been attracted to. But the other day, I was gifted this golden skull. And so what's happening You're collectively? Um, Artemis. Artemis. <laughs> I'm like, it's a really beautiful name. Artemis gifted me this skull. And so what this represents, not only for me, but collectively right now, since the last full moon, if you have been experiencing a lot of internal death, a lot of internal struggle, a lot of seeing your own stuff and not wanting to deal with it, it's because death, there's a lot of death happening right now. And it's a beautiful time to commit to who you really are in yourself. But death, the death of the old, which is really the rebirth of everything. And it's a golden skull. But how symbolic is that? I, know. I was like, I have this on my, um, at my table. It's just a golden skull. But it, there's, there's a collective death happening with releasing what is no longer you so that you have freedom, space, and freedom, space, and I want to say even internal permission to move forward. Because until something is totally gone, it's very difficult to move on. So that can um, be symbolic for a lot of different reasons. But I've been feeling this big time, and I was gifted a skull, so I thought I'd share. <laughs> I love it. I actually have an Aunt Party lamp that's a skull. It has a snake rolling around it. And it wow. You know, somebody coming in my home one time with, you know, vulgar consciousness and work, spirituality and stuff that they say they're looking for. That's not real. What do you, you know, what are you, a skull? Yeah. And I said, come on, the, the, the skull represents our mortality. And the sooner we can accept and appreciate that, you know, this yes. body will pass. Mm -hmm. And the snake represents us shedding our skin and growing and renewing and everything else. And he's just like, huh. and I mean, I, it just came to me on the fly. It's like, because I ne had never oh. even thought, I just thought it was a cool lamp. But then when this person was kind of questioning, like, all the other cool stuff I had, Whoa. you know, it's like, but that was the answer because yes. that's what they represent to me. Yes, yeah, I love that. And, and, and that we only live now. And so every decision, everything that you say yes to now is for your evolution. And if you were to hide, if you were to die tomorrow, would you be fulfilled with how you've been living your life? And if the answer is no, something, maybe an old pattern of yours needs to die in order for you to step into who you truly are because if you're watching this, you have something inside of you that wants to come out. And I, I would love to invite you to join me on this journey of accelerated evolution, of turning your light on, of connecting, of expansion, of massive growth, and and really awakening the world to their true self. 
And, and if I think about the environment, if I think about products, if I think about services, all the things that impact driven entrepreneurs and visionaries are bringing into the world and leaders, it's to raise consciousness. It's to wake people up to who they make, truly are. Make the world a better place. Yes. You know, I, I believe that our world, our climate, our society, our global society, we have the knowledge, we have the resources, mm-hmm. we have every single thing, the resourcefulness, everything we need to solve all the problems in this world, whether it be, you know, climate, you know, climate change, pollution, the environment, starvation and drought. Well, maybe not drought because that's actually a weather thing, but it, it affects our food and things in different parts of the world. Mm-hmm. But we have the ability, we have the resources. And when people wake up to that part of themselves and that higher consciousness within seeing the right for every human being to be joyful, blissful, happy, free, fed, mm. clothed, and sheltered. Yes. Right? I believe it's all of our God-given right. And who is anyone to deny anything back? Especially the way we're raping and storming the planet and the, the yes. harsh things that are happening there. The lack of recycling, the, the use of the resources mm-hmm. and all of those things. And I'm not saying don't use it. Everything happens for a reason. This is what's happening. But as we raise our consciousness, mm-hmm. we have more compassion. And, you know, I make more money so I can learn more, grow more, share more. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm not here to accumulate more stuff. We don't need more accumulation. Right? Yes. Well, this is what I love. You know, if I may say, mm-hmm. you know, when you take a look at a lot of the indigenous people in South America, wherever they are um, in the world, they live a nomadic, simple life. They don't have a lot of things because they're moving, following food. They don't have things like worry in their vocabulary. They don't really, you know, there's words they don't, they don't even have words within the words that we have. Mm. They don't feel those things. They don't do those things. So there's something to be said for you know, a simple life mm-hmm. versus being caught up in this consumer-driven mass capitalist machine. And we're not saying don't be successful. You know, I'm just saying, you know, step into it with a different level of compassion and growth and, you know, something that's actually serving humankind versus just making a ton of money and stuff. Mm-hmm. When I was really unhappy in my life, I went shopping a lot. I've never been a big consumer, but I definitely was more of a consumer than I am now. So. When we do the internal work, when we show up for ourselves, because it all starts with ourselves. Michael Jackson says it. It all starts with yourself, right? He has a song. And um, when we show up for ourselves and we remove the barriers that are preventing us from being in the flow of who we are, we don't want to harm anyone. And we're and if we do, we're more we're more conscious of it. And it's a, it's different. But there's a lot of unconscious behavior, and it's because we're in our pain. It's because we've stepped away from ourselves, from traumas, from triggers, and we've okay, lost who we truly are. The happier I am, the least I snack it, the less I snack it. Then. Oh, yes, yeah. there we go. You know, when you have that fulfillment and you're driven, all of a sudden you have a slow day, uh, something might, might, might happen, all of a sudden, you know, you catch yourself crawling into that snack mode or something like right. that, and it's just a bad habit, you know, but when you're, when you're driven and you're, you know, committed to what's best for your inner self and your true self, it's amazing how things change. And so that's a smaller, that's a smaller, as I'm going to say, bad habit. Yeah, yeah. But there's so many bigger habits that people have that are having a bigger impact negatively on the planet, negatively on others because of the same thing. So Mm -hmm. I think that's really beautiful that you brought that up. So there's the micro and then there's the big pieces where when we shift, we have more of the ability, more of the transmission to shift others when we are fully embodied. So thank you for sharing well, that. Hey, my pleasure. And, and, and what, what you're saying too, just, um, you know, you can't take others where you haven't gone. So if you're leading people, you need to have gone through and done the work. If you haven't mm-hmm. done the work, you can't take, you can only take people as far as you've gone. Mm-hmm. And that's really an, an important thing. And that's why continuing to learn and grow is really important mm-hmm. because you'll only take people so far. And heaven forbid someone might want to surpass where you're at. Mm-hmm. Right? And then you got to find them someone else. Or, you know, if, if we're desperate to retain a client, then we're not serving our client in the best way. So this is why I think it's important to always be learning. Always be learning. Always be expanding. Always be mm-hmm. investing in yourself. Always be serving. Mm-hmm. Just don't always be closed. Always be like closer. Mm-hmm.
Right? Yeah, there's yeah, a video online well, that's there's like, there's always there's be closing. Be closing. Yeah. You can YouTube it if you have time. Yeah. It's, it's kind of silly. It's from a movie and it's a little line of sales and things like that. I think it's hilarious. Yeah, it is. I'd just rather always be served. Great. Well, is there anything else you want to share? We're kind of getting near to the end of an hour. We've got 10 minutes. Oh, we're talking yeah. about a whole bunch of good so stuff. So much. So right. many good things. Well, what I want to share is it, the question isn't whether or not you're here to do great things in the world. The question is, are you really willing to wake up to the truth of who you are and who you're meant to be? And so we were talking about fear of success earlier. Um, one of the things that I experienced, you know, five, six years ago was I had a fear of my own power. I had a fear of my own voice. I had a fear of my Oh, again, you're the only one, Deidre. I know, right? I'm the only one. <laughs> so if you have a fear or this um, almost anxiety feeling inside of you that um, there's something that wants to be birthed, it's time for you to listen to that. Those nudges, those pulls towards people, places, videos, um, messages, whatever it is for you, it's there for a reason and that's your intuition saying there's something here for me. So the biggest thing that I've learned on my journey so far is to listen to the nudges, listen to the pulls. That's how I've been living my life the last couple of years, which has been, some people can think it's all insane, but it's been actually in flow and it's been really fun. Um, <laughs> But I, I think it's true. You got to listen to that intuition. Yes. And and there's a, a funny story. It's like feather brick truck. Have you heard that one? Mm -hmm. You know, the universe you know gives you the message of the little feather. Right. It just tickles you with it. Go ahead. Here you are. It's going to be tickled. Oh, yeah. Here it is. And then we we brush it off. We don't listen. And then we don't listen. The universe comes up with a brick and right. the brick yeah. knocks you in the head, and you're like, oh, well, no. And yes. we still don't listen. Yes. Until the universe comes in and runs you over with a truck. Yeah. Right? Totally. Yeah. I've had the universe like run me over with a truck. Message, yeah. Which is another quick, funny story. I love this story. And and it's it's kind of a joke and a story, and it illustrates the same point. It was about kind of like when New Orleans was flooded. It was all starting to happen, and there's a man in his house, and a truck comes by and says, you know, come come with me. The, the, it's flooding. It's flooding. <coughs> you got to go. we gotta, we got to vacate. He goes, God will save me. No, no worries. Thanks, Daniel. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do right, you know this one? Yeah, I know yeah. this one. And so, so then all of a sudden, you know, the waters come up, and he's in a second floor window. It's all up there, and he's just trying to keep above water. And the guy in the boat comes by and says, hey, come on, get in, get in. We'll yeah. make you to safety. And he says, it's okay, I trust. God will save me. God will save me. Yeah. And then he's on the roof. You know, the water's right there. It's almost time. A helicopter comes by, search and rescue, lowers everything down, grab it, grab the rope. He says, oh, it's okay. God will save me. Well, eventually, unfortunately, poor guy's, you know, laying face down in the water. He didn't make it. He gets to the pearly gates, and he meets God, and he says, God, what happened? I had so much faith in you. I had so much faith that you were going to save me. And he says, what do you mean? I said, a truck. I said, a boat. I said, a helicopter. Right? Hello? So, so it's the same thing. It's like when you see these opportunities, yeah. take them before they're too late. Other than that, you might waste 10 or 20 years, you know, or maybe the rest of your Yes. Not doing what you want to do. And yes. that, my friends, is not listening. Mm. And it's not living. Thank you. Right? you yeah, know, I, mean, I feel that. Living. No. You know, you got to be living a life of purpose, a life of service, and something that lights you up in your authentic self. And that's one of the things I really love about where you come from, is it's about that authenticity, it's the core of what's inside, mm -hmm. versus, you know, somebody just saying, do this, do this, do this, do this. Mm -hmm. Because um, in my school of training, thought and everything I've learned too is we can talk and teach you all the secrets of success of wealth and creation we can teach you how to build an airplane it doesn't matter we can teach you all of those things and we all know the 80 20 rule which I hope we all do anyways um, the 80 20 rule if you don't know just means you get 80% of your results and 20% of your effort you know is the basic idea anyways the 80 20 rule when it comes down to success and achievement 80% is your Technology, 20% is the actual how to, the instructions. And within the psychology, you have to be really related to your authentic self. Mm -hmm. Because other than that, it's just like a rat. Right? Yes. You know, it's just like that authentic self. Psychology is important. No, don't get me wrong. But within our psychology is our authentic self because that is the root of our psychology. That is the root of our essence and our being. 
Mm-hmm. So, you know, anything you can do to get there, if you feel there's something here for you, by all means, check out one of the links around this video. Check out Deeper. Uh, what's the website for your term? Do you have a website here? Is it on Facebook? It's not, it's not a website. It's oh, a okay. Facebook page yeah. that we have for the event, and then there's an Eventbrite uh, link with the details. We'll have a we'll have an official website page for it uh, for the next event. Nice. This is the first one. Well, so. it is uh, posted on ConsciousLivingNetwork.net, ConsciousLivingRadio.org as well. You can check out the information there. And, uh, yeah, we'll have the link all around this video as well. But we really hope to see you at the event. If you have any questions, you can reach out to Deidre herself as well. Uh, you can talk to her there. And you can also reach out to me. I'm happy to talk to you about really anything you want to talk about. So thank you very much for watching, everyone. Make yourself an epic masterpiece of a day because it's all up to you. Your day is yours. Mm. Awesome. Thank you, Deidre, so much for, for sharing your vision, your dream, your passion. I feel you. Thank you for having me. Awesome. Bye. Bye.